everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and the folks from GearBest.com asked me if I was interested in reviewing the Xiaomi Yi action camera. And typically, I don't usually look at this kind of stuff because it tends to be very generic in nature, but Xiaomi is actually a very well-known company in Asia. They make some awesome smartphones in the Chinese market that a lot of people in North America have been importing through sites like GearBest so they can uh, get their hands on them. This is a, a $68 action camera from Xiaomi, and it's actually pretty polished for what it is. So let's take a look at the hardware. Uh, this is it here. It's got a wide angle lens, very similar to what you would see on a GoPro. It does record though at 1080p 60s. So you can get uh, a couple different modes, but 60 frames per second at 1080 is the top mode. You have a power button here, which also doubles as a mode change button to switch it out of uh, video mode or out of photo mode. Uh, that's really the only setting that you can do without having an Android device connected to it via Wi-Fi. So you turn on the Wi-Fi right here. It does drain the battery faster, so you have to be mindful of that when you do uh, switch it into that mode. But you cannot do any configuration at all on the camera, so it has to be done uh, through the Android app. Then when you get this, uh, it comes with a Chinese instruction manual, which might be a little off-putting at first, especially if you don't speak Chinese. Luckily, the app uh, is in English if your Android uh, version is uh, set to English. So you will be able to see or read and know what you're doing with this when you get it hooked up. On the top here is the shutter button to either start and stop recording or to take pictures. On the back you have, this is the one issue that I found with the overall hardware design. I already lost the door that goes over uh, the memory card slot as well as the USB and HDMI ports here. I took it off and I lost it. I don't know where it went. I'll never find it again. Uh, the battery is under the housing here so you can uh, pull the battery out if you need to. Uh, it doesn't last all that long, especially when the Wi-Fi is on. So you'll probably get less than an hour of recording time uh, even with the Wi-Fi off. So not the best battery life in the world, but you know, I suppose you could keep a couple of batteries charged and swap them out. On the bottom, you have a tripod mount here, so you can get it uh, on a tripod without any accessories. When you get it uh, out of the box, this is pretty much all you get. You get this and the cables along with the battery. Uh, so if you want waterproof housings and other accessories, you're going to have to buy all those things separately. Uh, but as configured, this is $68 at the moment uh, on the GearBest site. So it's pretty reasonable for a 1080p 60 camera. Now in good light, the camera does very well. As you can see here, this is a very well-lit scene. Uh, the lens is a bit wide angle, so as we get closer to the dog, her nose gets bigger, but uh, it really does a very nice job in good light. I was very impressed with the image quality for the price. That was a nice thing to see. I've got some 60 frames per second video that I'll put in the link below, so you can kind of get a feel for uh, how it works at the top end also. But in good light, like most inexpensive cameras, it does very well, but I think this one does a little bit better than a lot of the other cheaper ones I have seen out there. So a uh, nice image quality on that front. Uh, it doesn't do as well with sound though, and I found occasionally I'm hearing this constant clicking that uh, comes into the video while I'm recording. It doesn't always do it, uh, but it's done it enough that it's really not something you're going to want to rely on for audio. Another thing that it lacks is stabilization. So I was holding the camera in one hand while I was walking the dog, and as you can see, it's really translating every bump and knock along the way here. And granted, this is kind of an extreme scenario, but I think if you're on a dirt bike or something and going over a lot of bumps and you know moguls or whatever it is that you go over on a dirt bike, uh, this this is the kind of stuff that you're going to see translated. It doesn't do a very good job of uh, keeping the image stable when you're uh, out doing that. So some of the higher end camcorders, of course, that we've looked at do much better. And I think even some of the action cameras now have better stabilization. So that's one area where you probably want to have some kind of uh, gimbal or something on it to keep it from uh, bouncing around too much there. Another thing that I discovered with it was the low light uh, kind of drops off the quality level substantially. So you can check out this shot here. This is a transition from good light to kind of low light. It actually drops the frame rate down when the lighting gets bad. So you can see here it gets very grainy. Uh, it even slows down the video quality, the video itself. It kind of goes to a lower shutter speed. So uh, this is one area where if you're in lower light conditions without any kind of secondary light coming down on, on the source, uh, it's not going to do all that well. So just keep those things in mind. I think if you keep it out in good light, uh, don't try to knock it around too much in, in what you're doing, uh, you'll have better results with it. But it's certainly not going to have the features that more expensive cameras will. I've got the camera connected to my video system here. We're running the app on my Android tablet. Again, the only way you can connect to this, to this camera is with the Android app. So we're going to hit the uh, camera connection button there to link up to it. You'll notice that it doesn't output a clean signal. So we're getting uh, these little, uh, if I can point to it somehow, uh, these little icons at the top of the screen there. And there's no way to get rid of those. I haven't figured out a way to get a very clean HDMI output. So if you're looking to plug this into a recorder or something and uh, want a clean output, right now I haven't figured out how to do that. Uh, you'll notice now we've got uh, the image of what the camera is seeing in the app right now. And there's a bit of a delay though between the time that I, I put my hand down here and when it actually uh, shows up 
up on screen. So if you're tracking action, this might be a challenge for you because you're gonna have a bit of a delay between the action and when it shows up on screen. But uh, the nice thing about having a wide angle lens is that uh, you generally point it in the right direction, you're gonna pick up what you're hoping to pick up. Uh, so you can do videos from here, you can record from the camera or from the app. Uh, you also have photo mode also, uh, so you can take still photos this way. There's also like a snapshot mode, it does like 10 second uh, little videos or GIFs that you can do too. So it's got a couple of different options there. Uh, the setting screen though is where you're gonna spend some time because uh, there is no other way to configure this camera unless you go uh, into the settings screen. It might look a little washed out on your screen, but uh, this is the resolution options right here. So if I tap on uh, the resolutions, you can see uh, what's available. So we're at 1080p uh, 30 right now, but it goes all the way down to I think like 864 by 488 at uh, 240 frames per second. So it does have some slow-mo modes. They don't look all that great, uh, but it does have that available. And we're not gonna step through all of the settings, but a couple more of note uh, under the camera section here. There is one for auto low light, and you saw what that did when we got into that room, uh, going from a lighter area to a very dark area. It kind of slows down the image to try to get as much light as possible in there, but you kind of get a real slow, muddy image. You probably would get a very fast, muddy image if you didn't have that on. So I don't know how good that uh, low light option is going to be. Again, I think this camera wants a lot of light. Uh, there's a loop recording option that you can see here, and what that does is it kind of puts it into like a dash cam cam mode where it just continuously records and it'll erase the oldest recording uh, and just keep going even if the card gets full. And that's something that you could do if you were uh, doing something like a dash cam kind of video. But again, the uh, stabilization isn't all that great in here for that. Uh, the most interesting one is called lens rectification. So right now I have it on and I want you to see what happens when I turn it off. So I'm gonna switch it off. You can see they get a little bit more of a wider image, but we also get a lot more distortion on the image, especially uh, when we're looking towards the center of the lens. So if I turn it back on now, uh, you'll see that that image gets a little less wide, but also a little less distorted. So if you really want uh, you know, an image that's a little bit more square, I would turn that lens rectification on so you don't get that kind of rounded distortion that you just saw there a minute ago. But other than that, it's a pretty basic, uh, some pretty basic settings. You can adjust some of the resolution uh, on the camera for still images and whatnot, but uh, really nothing else of note. But it's a nice app. It just feels like it's really polished and uh, really well put together. So that is the Xiaomi Yi action camera. Uh, good in good light, and actually surprisingly good in good light. Uh, but you want to be mindful of the fact that it lacks uh, stabilization and doesn't do very well at all in low light. And again, I had some uh, audio issues with it too. But if you're looking for a real cheap and dirty action camera, I think this is going to uh, foot the bill quite nicely. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.